Explainer and welcome to the series of Maths Pass Papers, uh, the higher course, uh, 2008. We're going to look at pay Paper 1 and for today's session it will be Question 1. So without further ado, we look at Part A. Uh, what do we have? Well, we have an algebraic fraction being subtracted by another. What we'd like is for both denominators on the two fractions to be the same and we see that in fact the denominator on the second fraction need only be multiplied by x plus 2 to equal the denominator on the first fraction. So what we'll do is we'll multiply above and below uh, the second fraction only by x plus 2 and we see we finally managed to get the two denominators to be the same so we can concentrate on the numerator and subtract the numerator of the second fraction the modified numerator of the second fraction from the numerator on the first fraction and that's a, a question of seeing what might cancel happily enough we see x squared is cancelled and we're left with 4 minus 2x on the numerator furthermore we're left with this fraction but we see that the numerator x minus 2 has a, a factor of the denominator so more cancelling can take place and we can arrive at the simplification of 2 over x plus 2, or 2 times x plus 2 to the minus 1. And that, in fact, is as far as we can go in terms of simplification on part A. So we move on to part B. OK, one of the roots of this equation, a cubic, is an integer, and we need to solve it. OK, so this is a straightforward cubic equation, where some inspection and guessing can go a long way. Keep Viet's formulas for the coefficients in mind for this, okay? Now for a set of cubic equation of ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus d equal to zero, they are those three, okay? Um, in the first case, minus b over a is equal to the sum of the three roots. The pairwise product, the sum of the pairwise products of the three roots <coughs> is actually equal to c over a, and then the product of the three roots is equal to minus d over a. Okay, so let's divide our fraction across by 6, in which case we get that, and we can study this. The other two roots, besides the integer, need to be fairly convenient fractions, okay? Um, as the coefficients aren't actually that complex, so we're expecting fractions for the other two roots. Further note that the x squared coefficients uh, are quite large, or is quite large, and the final constant, the product of the three roots, is rather small. So we're going to guess and say that all the roots are positive. Okay. Now the integer root must now must then be either one of 1, 2, 3, or 4, because 29 over 6 is 4 uh, by 5 sixths, five, 4 plus 5 sixths. Okay, so that's why it can only be uh, 1, 2, 3, or 4. And we also note that that denominator um, of 6 on that, on 29 over 6, cannot be affected by the integer, only by the two fractional roots. So we deduce that the two fractional roots must add up to 5 over 6. That means that they must either be 1 of 1 over 6 and 4 over 6, or 2 over 6 and 3 over 6. So we have a few values. We've reduced the, the huge number of roots that uh, a cubic can possibly have to actually only a few. And we can, by trial and error, plug them into the equation. In fact, one or two tries will reveal the three, three, three over two, and the third to be the root, and this can be checked by expanding that expression. So that is actually the answer to part B. We move on to part C. We're told two roots of the equation, actually we're given the standard form of cubic equation, are P and minus P, show that BC equals AD. Okay, we can reuse Viet's formulas again for this problem. We shall call the third root u for the unknown. So we have p minus p and u. Now this time we're going to list out its formulas in terms of p minus p and u. Now the first one, minus b over a, is going to equal p plus minus p plus u. So we actually see the two p's cancel, and we get our unknown root to equal minus b over a. c over a equals p times minus p plus p by u plus minus p by u see that the p by u's cancel and we're left with minus p squared equaling c over a. Okay, we can substitute these values into the third and final formula and we're left with minus 
minus d over a equal to p by minus p by u. We can plug in our values there. We get minus bc over a squared equal to minus d over a, from which the answer pops out by multiplying across by a squared. And that is the end of question one.